Good morning. We welcome all of you who are with us today and joining in our worship and everybody that's at home or on video or Zoom or whatever, we're happy to have you join with us. Would you please stand for entry of the light and remain standing for ask you what great thing I know. join with me in the spirit of prayer with thoughts that God is our peace and salvation if we will just do his will. Dear Lord, thank you for yet another gorgeous day. Whether we see rain or sunshine, you show us your power and strength as well as your compassion and beauty. You give us so much and we are so blessed. We pray for compromise and healing in the ravaged, war-torn lands. We pray for peace everywhere. We pray for confidence in our leaders to keep our country safe. We pray we will each take a part in upholding your teachings to meet that end. We pray that you will watch over each of us, guiding and nudging us toward our destinies. We pray we'll be successful not only in our lives, with with our loved ones, nurturing them to your will. We pray we will listen to what you teach us, to love the Lord our God and to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to depend on him, and to serve him with heart and soul. We thank you for forgiving our weaknesses and transgressions. May we lift you up as we join in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd remind you the offertory plate is in the back, and now we'll be blessed with our choir. Trio, ladies trio. Wow. <laughs> I want to 
wanted to tell you all, I'm not sure if I'm talking in the mic or just loud, there is a part for you in the song we're singing today. When I point you in the in the chorus or the yeah the chorus, there's a place where you need to say praise God. I think that you can do that. Yeah, I'll point to you and you'll feel it. I'm sure. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have attained access to his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just love this time of year when you get together for family reunions all that good stuff when you get to see Aunt Millie and she plants a great big red lipstick kiss right on your cheek. And you get to see and these older ladies toddling around with her pocketbooks. They don't want it to get lost, evidently. Maybe she's got something special inside. But it's such a great time of the year to be able to uh, meet with family reunions and church reunions and all of that good stuff. And you go on picnics and get hot and sweaty, and, but you enjoy it and you can do it again the next year. 
Uh, you're about to hear of five women in the lineage of Jesus. These were Western women who lived in ancient times. Yet their stories apply to our lives to this day. God had chosen stories of these unlikely women of the Bible who changed eternity. These women were not perfect. They had courage. They took risks. They did unexpected things. They lived daily lives, very daring. They made mistakes, lots of mistakes, yet God used them in his perfect plan to bring forth the Christ, the Savior of the world. Tamar is a woman of hope. Rahab is a woman of faith. Ruth is a woman of love. Bathsheba is a woman who received unlimited grace. Mary is a woman of obedience. Tamar, a woman of hope. She had hopes and dreams for the future, but God had bigger plans. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and hope. And that is in Jeremiah 29, 11. Judah had arranged for Tamar to wed his oldest son, Ur. But Ur was a wicked man in the Lord's eyes. So the Lord took his, eye, his life. Then Judah sold his second son, Onan, because the law requires him to marry Tamar. Her first son from him would be his brother's heir. Onan was not willing to have a child that would not be his own. The Lord considered this wrong, so he too took his life. Judah told Tamar to wait on his third son when he was old enough to marry. He had no intention of, to do this for fear that he too would also die. Her actions then were carried through with the sole intention of having a child to carry on the family. Both Judah and Tamar found God's forgiveness and saw him work out his good purposes through their lives. Only God knows the heart of a person. God saved them by his special favor by believing. Tamar had hoped for a son, but God gave her twin sons. Judah had hoped for an heir. He gave him two. Just as God worked in the lives of Judah and Tamar, he works in our lives today. The second person that God had chosen was Rahab, who was a woman of faith. She was a harlot and a spy for the king. No one knew how she hated her life. No one guessed how helpless she felt by living plans made by her father and the king. The women in Jericho thought she lived a plush life by owning a house of her own. She wore gold jewelry and silk robes. They didn't know what it felt like to be used and stripped of humanity. And all these women thought she was the one that was the lucky one to have all of these fine things. But it's not the fine things that make us happy. It's the love. No one suspected her resentment, her desire to be free. She had other plans, hopes, and dreams. Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, and her relatives who were with her in her house because she had hidden the spies 
Joshua had sent to Jericho. Rahab married an Israelite named Salmon and bore him a son. Rahab is considered a woman of great faith and is held high esteem in the Bible. Faith, our great faith, will be put to test. God uses trouble to show us how he can help us, to strengthen us. Consider it a pure joy when you have troubles. Like the size of a mustard seed, your faith will sustain you. And then there's Ruth, a woman of love. We all know Ruth. The book of Ruth tells a beautiful story of a man and woman from different backgrounds. They fell in love and married. In the days when judges ruled in Israel, a man from Bethlehem in Judea left the country because of a severe famine. He took his wife, Naomi, and two sons and went to live in the country of Moab. During their time in Moab, Naomi's husband died, and later her two sons died. And after the death of their two sons, one of the daughters-in-law returned to her people, which Ruth, uh, Naomi had insisted. But Ruth stayed with Naomi, saying, I will go where you go, your people, will be my people. So it was, there was a wealthy and an influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz. Ruth was gleaning his barley fields when he noticed her beauty and her hard work she was doing. Ruth could not understand why Boaz was being kind to her because she was only a foreigner. I know of the love and kindness you've shown your mother-in-law. The book of James wants his readers not only to be, be Christians, but to put that in action and do the good works. But Ruth and Boaz were married, and they had a son named Obed. He became the father of Jesse and grandfather of David. There again, you see the lineage of the Jesus, or God. God is eager to help those who have sinned, if only they will ask. Bathsheba received unlimited grace Bathsheba is remembered for her adulterous affair with King David. A son was born.